The Soybean School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Pride Seeds, Aragon LQ Pre-Harvest Weed Control, and Cruiser Max Vibrance Beans. Werner Tobin here on the Soybean School. Today I am joined by Abby Diora. He is the uh, Seed Care Technical Lead for Syngenta. Abby, how's it going? It's pretty good, Bern. Thanks for having me here today. Hey, appreciate you taking the time. I want to talk about sudden death syndrome today. Um, let's talk about 2020. What type of uh, uh, impact are we seeing this year? What about conditions for the disease this year? Yeah, so if you uh, think about the disease conditions, Bern, um, what we need for this particular disease is that uh, for the infection by this pathogen that causes sudden death syndrome, it needs cool and moist conditions. And that's exactly what we had earlier this year. And that's why we see a huge impact this year in the fields where we have the history of this pathogen. Talk about as well, um, um, soybean cyst and nematode, SDS and SCN as we like to say, typically go hand in hand. And when they show up together, it's a one-two punch. Exactly. So um, soybean cyst nematodes, they make entry points uh, for this pathogen in the root. So it's easy for the fusarium to enter when there is already holes in the plant, right? So that causes uh, a more severity if you have SCN and STS both in the field. You would have more STS symptoms on the plant later on in the season. Abby, talk about SDS and identifying the disease in the field. What are we seeing? What are we looking for when we're, when we're looking at a field like this? So, uh, when you look at the symptoms of um, STS, there are two different kinds of symptoms that you can look for. One is above ground symptoms and another one is the below ground symptoms. The above ground symptoms, there are three different phases. The first one is uh, the yellowing of the leaves, which is going to be intravenal yellowing. And uh, what you would see is initially there will be the, the, the yellowing will be the uh, yellow spots in between the veins. And those spots, they're going to merge together. And that's the phase one. And in the phase two, you would have those yellow uh, area that is going to turn into brown discoloration. That's basically a dead or the necrotic tissue. This is where you're going to have reduced photosynthesis and there's going to be depletion of the energy resources to the plant, which is needed at the most critical stages. And uh, the third phase is going to be the premature defoliation where plant is going to drop off those leaves. What you would see is that leaves are going to get dropped, but petioles are still going to stay on the stems so you would have the skeletal appearance on the plant so that's how you would identify uh, sudden death syndrome the unfortunate part is that when the leaves are already got dropped this is where the plant is going to have a complete shutdown of the photosynthesis and the energy uh, when it is needed the most which is the, the grain uh, fill period Talk about, I guess, um, yield impact, Abby. I mean, I, I was here at 20%, but hey, at, when you have severe pressure, you can get much higher than that. Oh, exactly. So really, the, pre the yield loss depends on uh, several different factors. The first one is that how much pressure level you have out in your field. If you have low pressure, obviously, you have less losses. And uh, second piece is that the genetic tolerant variety that you're using in the field. If you have a tolerant variety, you're going to have less impact. And the most important that I feel is that the, the timing of the symptom development on these varieties, uh, that's very critical. Uh, if you have the symptoms already appearing right after the reproductive phase, which is the flowering stage, or um, the symptoms are appearing at the pod fill stage, you're going to have, uh, or the potting stage, uh, you're going to have more impact. You're going to have flower abortion or the uh, pod abortion. This is the biggest impact on the yield because the plant is not even going to the next phase. Um, then you have the symptoms that are appearing late in the season, that's during the grain fill period. Uh, at that time, you can have impact on the seed size or the seed weight. This is where you again have the impact, but it's going to be lesser impact versus when you have the disease showing at the flowering at the pod formation stage. So it really depends on when the disease is appearing. But what we have seen is that if you have SCN in the background, in addition to the susceptible variety, you can expect 50% or even above if you have everything conducive for this particular disease. Let's, let's talk about um, how we control this, how do we tackle it. Um, you know, does, it it's, does it start with genetics, finding that, those tolerant varieties? Absolutely. So the tolerant variety is the first tool that you would use to manage this particular disease. Uh, but unfortunately, it's not the silver bullet. Um, we have uh, genetic tolerant varieties for SDS, but the, the challenge is that even for the tolerant varieties, you will be losing some 
level of the yield over there, although uh, the symptoms are not going to be that severe versus what you see on the susceptible varieties. So what you need to do is that the other tool that is most, more effective along with the varieties is the, the seed treatments. So seed treatments are very effective just because seed treatments can control the early season infection and that would delay the symptoms or uh, suppress the symptoms later on in the season. So Abby, uh, Syngenta's just released Sosro, a new seed treatment. Tell us about it. Obviously, um, you want it down with the seed to protect that uh, plant all the way and push, keep it healthy as long as possible. Yeah, so first of all, yeah, we are very glad to have, you know, released this for the Canadian growers. Sosro basically, um, if you look at Sosro, the way it works, there are two cool features of, uh, about Sosro. The first one is um, it's strong biological activity. Uh, all you need is a really small amount of the product because the, the active ingredient in Sotra is adapidin and that belongs to the group STHI uh, class, of the, uh, class of the chemicals and uh, adapidin is very very strong on STS pathogen itself. And the second piece is its um, low solubility index. So this product stays in the ground longer and this is exactly what you need for a pathogen like certain death syndrome because it infects the roots and you want your product to stay longer in the ground to protect those roots from this pathogen. And this is how Sotro works and uh, provides a protection. And what we have seen is that Sotro provides really consistent performance because of these two features um, across different varieties or different level of the pressures. In our last two years of the trials in, uh, in Canada, we, we have seen is that there's about four bushel advantage um, per acre that growers can get across different uh, varieties. Mm -hmm. So right, right, if we right. combine the right variety right. with a seed treatment, we exactly. can keep uh, that factory, that plant working longer and put more yield in the bin? Absolutely. This, there you go. That's what exactly we need to do. We need to manage this disease with different tools in the toolbox. <laughs>